It's time for Bring in the Heat with Brian Nolan. What's up, everyone? Welcome on into Bring the Heat with Brian Nolan. Obviously, as you can tell, I am not Brian Nolan. I am Trey Lyle filling in for Brian this week. But Brian does have an interview with a NASCAR Xfinity Series driver, Josh Williams, got it this past weekend in Chicago. So let's head to that interview as Josh Williams heads to the Inferno. Now it's time for... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gracious. goodness. Well, we're, we're looking at Ryan Sieg, and uh, he's currently running fourth. But that's Josh Williams, who was asked, as I told you, to go to the garage for extending the caution. The debris came off his car. He has parked his number 92 at the start-finish line, and oh he, no, he's walking to the garage. Look at this. Let's what an exit. Wave and see you later. To go into the inferno with Brian. Folks, at this time, I'm going to bring the program, driver of the number 11 car, probably the best mullet in the garage area, probably the best mullet I've ever seen. I mean, my brother-in-law is going to kill me for that, <laughs> but Josh Williams joins the program. First and foremost, you want to give any tips to my brother-in-law about how to grow a beautiful mullet like that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I think it's all in how you cut it, right? So uh, my wife cuts my hair, so she's, uh, she's the one that keeps up with all this mess. See, he gets all these perms and everything, and I, I, I just don't get it. Yeah, I got natural curls, man, so I don't need the perms. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Let's talk about your season. Obviously, it's not gone the way you probably want it, so to speak, uh, but three top tens, most um, so far out of the past, what, three years? I mean, you had three top tens last year. What's been going right, and then what's been going wrong for your season? Um, I don't know. I mean... We had a, a good stretch of runs there, and we thought that we were going to, you know, be on pace for to have some consistent top ten finishes. But, um, you know, it's, this is racing, right? Things happen and, and stuff like that. So, I've been battling a little bit of luck and, and other things. But um, I think we'll be fine. Um, I mean, it's it's just part of it. You know, I'm learning these cars and, and learning different people, and they're learning me. So, um, we're making progress. Biggest difference for you in running with a team that has – really good equipment other than a team that doesn't have it as well as your the equipment you're running now what's been the biggest difference um i don't know i, I think it's just the way that the, the cars drive um they drive super different and aj has been kind of the one that's been leading the the program for a while so everything's a little bit closer to, to what his feel is um so I'm trying to train myself to drive like AJ, and then <laughs> and then we're working on changing some things to to make it a little bit more comfortable for me too. So we'll get there, and once we get there, you'll you'll notice. Looking at now your relationship with Chris Rice, I mean, every time I talk to him, he's so jubilant, vibrant. He's 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 just happy. What is he like behind the scenes? Is he like that behind the scenes? <laughs> Sometimes it depends on <laughs> it depends on if we run good or not. So. Um, you know, he's real passionate and, and he wants to see everybody on the team run good, you know, whether it's a cup series or Xfinity series, he wants, you know, every car to, to run up front and he wants every car to win the race, but that's impossible. Right. So one of us, one of us has got to win. So, um, you know, he's just real passionate and, and him and Matt put a lot of effort into making sure that, you know, we've got everything we need to be successful. Obviously, one of the cool things that you do, I see it on, on social media, is you go around to children's hospitals visiting kids with illnesses. Uh, I mean, personally for me, I was in the hospital when I was like two and three, so it, it brings an extra uh, smile to my heart, so I appreciate that. What, what is that like for you? Uh, is, it, is it hard not to get choked up seeing the, those kids since you, I mean, you are now a father just recently as well? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, we've been doing it for a while, and it's just... Almost ten years. I think next year, next year will be ten years. So, um, it's definitely, uh, it definitely weighs on you a little bit, you know. But it's if I can just spend an hour, or two hours, or even ten minutes with some of these kids and, and just put a smile on their face for a little while, it it means a lot to me. And and we're going to continue to to keep on doing this. Obviously, not the season that you've wanted so far. You've you got a top ten in Portland. You've had, like I said, three top tens best chances to get from a top 10 to a top five and maybe even contend for a win somewhere yeah i think it's possible um you know there's a bunch of tracks that that i've been really good at in the past um you know and other equipment that that we've looked forward to um there's been a couple that i'm usually really good at that we weren't very good at so um you know we just got to find that balance and and once we do we'll start clicking off those top tens and and then we'll be in position to contend for wins 
where do we see Josh Williams in 2025? Where, where does the future hold for you? Hopefully contend for a championship in the Xfinity Series. There it is. Josh Williams joins the program. Big thanks to Josh Williams and everyone at Colleague Racing for help with that interview. Great interview Brian conducted there. Someone else who was at Chicago this past weekend was Stephen Stump of Frontstretch.com. He joins me now as we start off with What's Still Hot? What's Still Hot? It's time to upgrade you on the latest news in NASCAR. What's still hot? Stephen Stump here with us at Stephen underscore Stump. He was in Chicago this past weekend. Uh, Stephen, my first question to you is, I heard rumblings that you weren't able to stay dry this past weekend. Was that true? And you have you finally dried off from this past weekend? <laughs> that is that is correct. Um, it, was, it was disappointing because the forecast looked like it was going to be perfect. You know, and then and then we get to Sunday and then it's like, OK, there might be some rain. And then, wow, there's really some rain. And uh, when SPG crashed out, I uh, I ran to the uh, I ran to the care center. By this point, it was just pouring rain. I was like tucking the microphone inside the uh, the jacket Brian had. And uh, let's just say that I had to dr- get dried off with paper towels by the time I got back to the media center when it was over. I heard uh, one Davey Siegel assisted you on that, so shout out to Davey with the help there. But big news came out as we record this Wednesday evening. This obviously comes out on Thursday. Noel Gregson is, uh, I think this is a confirmed rumor at this point, uh, one of the two open seats at Furniture furniture Row. I've done this multiple times today. Front Row uh, Motorsports heading to the, not the 34 car, he's going to be the, I guess, the new charter. So maybe it's still going to be the 10 car, but uh, it is unconfirmed what number he will be. What was your reaction to this news? And do you think that's a good move for front row? seems they're heading to a path of three younger drivers. At least that was the sense that they had post-race. So they have Todd Gilliland, obviously, and now they have his former teammate at Kyle Busch Motorsports and Noah Gregson. Well, something that struck me interesting about the deal was the fact that Gregson was signed for 2025 and beyond in their words. And front row has been known for giving just, you know, kind of generally single year contracts and then renewing and having those single years is part of the reason why Michael McDowell left to fire. So I, it definitely strikes me as a, it definitely, you know, I find it interesting that Gregson got a multi-year deal, but that might also be because they, because um, they've just seen a lot, they've impressed out of him. And to that point, Gregson has really resurrected his cup career after what can only be described as a disaster rookie season in 2023 that ended in August. Um, he's even with SHR kind of just collapsing, folding in around him. He's, you know, but he's had a really good season, even despite, the, even, even despite the penalties. So I think it's definitely a good move. And I think Gregson's definitely earned an, another ride after, you know, the first half of this year. So I'm excited to see how that plays out next year and who front row gets for the third car. Yeah, the I think Bob Pockers of Fox Sports said maybe a Sam Mayer or Christian Eckes. If they're going with the younger route, I actually like it with the amount, as much investment they are putting into the team. If you go younger and truly become a developmental team, and if you can figure out a way to keep them long-term, which they've sort of done with Todd at this point, and then who's performed really well, especially in the last couple of races. And if you look at what Noah's done this year, I think this is going to be a pretty interesting team as they move to a Tier 1-4 team it's definitely something that plays out. Other news and notes, uh, we sort of talked about this in happy hour, whether he'd be fined or not and his actions, but Bubba Wallace officially fined 50,000 smackaroonies. That's a lot of money to me, uh, but maybe not to him as much, but uh, $50,000 for his instant with Alex Bowman. Chase Elliott, not a part of this. He's NASCAR did say they're still looking into it, but I would assume he's not getting fined at this point. Overall, you were there in Chicago. I don't know if you ever, it maybe took you a little bit to see what happened post-race, but ultimately, what was your thoughts on the incident between Alex Bowman and Bubba Wallace, and do you think the the penalty is justified, or do you think it should have been steeper or less? I feel like it should have been less, but I'll kind of get into that thought process in a moment. When I first saw the incident, it was on replay, obviously. I was busy, you know, grabbing, trying to get Christopher Bell before he declined my, <laughs> declined my interview with for good reason after that race. But uh, 
when I saw that when I saw first saw the replay, I was like, ooh, yikes. But then I think I feel like once Alex Bowman said in his post race winning presser that he shouldn't be fined or penalized, I feel like that was really the end of it. Like if the guy himself says that it was totally fine, he shouldn't be penalized. I feel like that should have been the end of it. And I think to that point, it is shocking that one one post race altercation was fine and the other wasn't. But I think if you think back to Ricky Sinas Jr. in the Kyle Bush fight at North Wilkesboro, I think I feel like what NASCAR was going for is the premeditation aspect. So when Chase Elliott spun Daniel Suarez in the cool down, that had, that incident I laugh. Tensions were running high, heat the moment. Same thing that happened when Truex went berserk at Richmond. That was all that was all at the very end of the race. You can also think back to Truex spinning Jimmy Johnson out at the Roval in twenty eighteen or Denny Hamlin doing the co burnout with Alex Bowman at Martinsville in 20, 2021. Those were all at the very end of the race. On the other hand, the incident with Bowman and Bubba happened quite a bit earlier. And I think I feel like again, Master hasn't said anything in that regard, but I feel just looking at the Stenhouse penalty and how shocking that was. I feel like that had to play a part into why Bubba was penalized. But I feel like, in my personal opinion, um, I feel like it should have been less or not even a penalty at all. But of course, that that's just me speaking. I'm not I'm not the sanctioning body. Yeah, that's sort of what I said in Happy Hour last night. Is I lean towards it not being a penalty at all. It's just kind of a racing deal. But I'm just glad people brought up a points deduction. I'm really glad that didn't happen because he is the first driver out, quote unquote, and. I never want NASCAR to step in in the playoff points situation. Like I get reducing points for Carson Hosevar because one, there were safety tra- trucks on track at the time. That's a mouthful, but also he's nowhere near the cut line. And I just feel like 45 points is a big gap already. So you essentially, it's more of winning in from below the cut line now. But if you made, let's say you got like a 25 point penalty. Well, then you're going to like chase Briscoe at like 50 something points. Well, with six races left, like you would essentially have to finish 10 positions ahead. So definitely I'm glad they didn't do that aspect of it, which I never thought would happen. Agreed there. I didn't think it'd be a point penalty. I I was maybe expecting a fine, but again, I was not expecting it to be that much either. All right, Steven, let's move to our next segment with uh, the sound bite of the week. Well, Tony, what angered you at the end of the race? What did you take issue with? What the hell do you think I was mad about? Dumb little runs us clear down to the infield he wants to about everybody else and he's the one that drives like a little i'm gonna bust his ass thanks tony thank you it's time for the sound bites of the week based off of that um in the race and you have the second you're, you're running to a time distance you've got the second stage and now you have all these caution laps i think one thing that was discussed down here would it make sense to change the rule there and just say we're not going to go to a caution at the, at the stage break of two um do like last year and keep running laps so that there's more of that racing or i like this Dustin. i like this. it's not my idea it's hey it's your idea it's i say at all the road courses remove the stage it breaks again that was more fun let's do that and then it prevents this just in case there is weather that's how we're going to pitch it i think that's the best way to do it so there you have it michael mcdowell obviously uh Maybe a big reason why he won the race last year at Indianapolis was no stage breaks. Uh, he is pitching to get back to that. So, Stephen, I think it's obvious why he said it, but do you think they should go back to that? Well, although I personally would be in favor of it, I don't think it's that simple because, I mean, we tried this whole experiment last year and all the fans said, oh, it's too boring. Please bring them back. And now they're back. What I do think, though, I, I think they should I think they should have some flexibility with it. Like, for example, in the very first stage, there was a Corey LaJoy crash. I think like three laps before the end, but they didn't have enough time to restart. So it ended up being a seven lap caution, which on a road course is just. And then when we go to the second stage, when. You know, we're racing against darkness. We're racing against the clock. We want to try and get all the laps in. I don't know how exactly it would work, but I feel like there needs to be some audibles in situations like this. Like if there's a caution, if there's a caution kind of like right before the stage end and it's not going to get restarted, just declare the stage over at that point, do the pit stop as normal, kind of bump everything up a little bit. 
And also, you know, maybe if it is, again, a race against time or race against weather, maybe find a way to, to eliminate those stages as well. That's that's the way I see it. I feel like, is again, I feel like the whole experiment last year, at least in the eyes of many fans, did not work. So I think just, just those minor tweaks from time to time on special occasions, I think that's the way it should go. Similar how they do single file restarts during some times compared to double file and changing that back and forth. I think that's a... I think that's a good idea, Stephen. I like that. Um, being malleable with it, I think that's a big word we could use right now. And I think on Sunday, if they didn't have the stage break and then stage two, I think would have made. I think it would have one increased Chris Rebell's chances of winning because he didn't have to get bunched up and it caused what it did. I think it would have been way more interesting to see the guys on slicks try to close that gap as quickly as possible with the amount of time left. So, yeah, I think that's a, a really, really keen point by you, Stephen. All right, final segment. Let's uh, let's wrap things up. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start-finish line. No caution. They're side by side. Right to the line. Dog crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. The checkered flag is out, and it's time for the final thoughts. Final thoughts. Anything you want to rant, rave, or review about the checker flag is out. Steven Stump, the floor is yours. Um, we've just had the worst luck with weather, with rain, haven't we? Like, ever since NBC took over, I believe all four cup races have had some kind of weather delay. It's the second year in a row we did not get the, the scheduled distance to Chicago. It's just, it's just a very, it's just a very rough patch. So. Fingers crossed that Pocono is going to be fine, but I'm also very excited. I'm very excited for that one, just because I mean, going down to one date, especially kind of with you know, kind of the COVID restrictions and all that ending last year, we saw how much of a party Pocono was with that one date. I believe it was the best attendance since 2010. So in that regard, and I will be there this weekend myself. I'm very excited to you know for Pocono, and we think about Denny versus Kyle. What happened there last year? I feel like we might have another battle another chapter in the story between those two as well yeah I, I am pumped to see pocono i think we're in store for a really good race this weekend i think the xfinity cars are using bob said the super speedway engine but the xfinity or the intermediate package so that could be interesting how those cars race i always said the xfinity series delivers the best racing in the sport yeah, i'm not I'm a gonna... fan. <laughs> well we'll agree to disagree but <laughs> I personally am going to talk about, and I, I want to touch on what we talked about at Happy Hour, what you talk, talked about with the Did You Notice column, uh, Corey LaJoy's future. It It's on a clock. It truly is. And I tend towards his time at Spire Motorsports is running out compared to he's going to have a long career. And it's I, I hate to say this. It's just he's not proven it. He's outperformed. Carson knows as far as outperformed in this year, and you're getting a guy in Ronnie Childers who is an elite of an elite crew chief and is going to bring a lot of speed to that seven car next year. And it's put up or shove, put up or sh a shut up time, and really for the first time in Corey's career at this kind of level. And we're going to have a depth of field where I think, you know, the guy it's quote unquote seventeenth is going to have a quote unquote really good year. Because the depth in the Cup Series is arguably the deepest it's been in quite some time. I kind of thought about this yesterday during happy hour. Like, as the years goes on and the parity that NASCAR has gotten with the next gen car, you're going to have, I mean, you look at it in points right now. Todd Gillen's had one of the best months in all of the Cup Series. He's 19th in points. Josh Berry is 21st. McDowell is 22nd. And he's had some polls this year. Gregson, who we mentioned, is 23rd. Obviously, the point points penalty host of R who's had a really good rookie year is 25th. Like the depth one through 25 is really good in the cup series right now. And it's going to stay really good in the cup series. When you add, you know, spire growing like it is track house, adding another driver, probably SVG. And it, it's going to be interesting to see the playoff structure. And you have guys that, you know, quote unquote, miss the playoffs, but have good years. And I think we've seen an increase in, non-playoff drivers winning playoff races and i think that trend's going to continue i think another thing kind of just thinking about chicago is i believe i'd have to look at it myself i think it was something like eight of the top 10 in points entering the day 
finished 20th or worse. <laughs> so it was quite the shuffle. And we think about it, we think about, you know, gone are the days of the Gen 6 era where someone would have like 26 top 10s, you know, 18 top fives. Average finishes also tank. Chase Elliott leads the way. But if you think about it, Kyle Larson, you know, leads the points, missed a race and has an average finish of 13.7. That's kind of how, that's kind of how, you know, much parity there has been at the front of the finishing war. And we think about how de- great Denny Hamlin's been. He's now had, he's now had an average finish of 25.4 in the last five races. Christopher Bell, again, one of the fastest, you know, cars this year, he's led 400 and some 480 something laps the last seven races, yet he has seven, finishes of 30th or worse this year in 20 races. So we're definitely seeing a lot more parity out towards the front. And I believe with Zane Smith, it's runner up in Nashville that I believe now every single full-time car has scored a top 10. There we have it. Some sizzling stats to end bringing the heat with Brian Nolan. Steven, anything you want to plug? Uh, I, I sort of plugged your article for frontstretch.com. Uh, that's out right now. Uh, you can tune into, obviously you'll be at Pocono. Anything else I'm missing? Uh, I'll be doing a all the four burning questions um, available Friday morning. I will be touching on the rain and the bad NASCAR's bad luck with it in a very humorous way. I think you'll be entertained to see it. So got that. And then I'll be at Pocono and Indy the next two weeks. So I'm excited to bring you coverage from there. Looking forward to my bathroom reading material that you'll put out for frontstretch.com. For Steven, my name is Trey Lyle. Brian Nolan will be back next week after a race at Pocono. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Bring the Heat with Brian Nolan. What's up? Michael Massey here, frontstretch.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button.